Do you ever fear rejection? What would be possible for you if you stopped doing that? This episode is about the upside of rejection, because when you can see that it's not that bad, it becomes a lot less scary. You're listening to Peer Light, where we explore how to become the highest version of yourself so that you feel worthy of your craziest dreams and confident in your power to make them happen. My name is Ailee. I'm a coach, writer, and a kundalini yoga and meditation teacher. This is episode 66. My friend Alexa recently shared an article with me called Wealthy, Successful, and Miserable. It was published in the New York Times, and that is the inspiration for this episode. So you can find a link to it in the show notes at purelightpodcast.com under episode 66. In the article, Charles Duhigg talks about going to the 15th reunion of his Harvard MBA class. And you would think that with a Harvard MBA, you would be able to do pretty much whatever you want. So you should, in theory, be happy and successful and satisfied with your career. But um, what Charles shared in the article is that that isn't what he found at the reunion. Um, In fact, he found that many of his classmates were not happy with their careers. And part of that was from stuff that you would expect, uh, you know, things like the culture of being constantly busy, office politics, that kind of thing. But part of it was also based on something that was way more intangible. And he described it as an underlying sense that their work isn't worth the grueling effort they're putting into it. And that made me think about one of the shifts that happened for me when I was working for a consulting firm and I was up for promotion and I didn't get it. Because when I first started working as a management consultant, which was right out of school, so right after university, my dad said to me, you can't do that forever. At some point, you'll want to settle down and have a family. And I stood there looking at him thinking, like, watch me. And then I started working. And I realized pretty quickly that consulting is a competitive environment and it rewards performance. So I worked as hard as I could and I decided to try to make it to the to the top as quickly as possible. So I was often working 60 hours a week. On occasion, it would be 70 or 80 and 50 hours was a light week. So I was basically like a workaholic and it was stressful because, you know, there's intense deadlines sometimes and the long hours. And I made it a lot worse by not making time to take care of myself. And on top of that, there's a lot of uncertainty in consulting. So the way that consulting works is you get assigned on a project and then you usually go to the client site to work. So what you're working on, who you're working with, where you work, and even what city you work in could change pretty easily. And sometimes with very little notice, even though you're still ultimately working for the same company. And so through all of this, I did whatever was required to make sure everything got done as well as I could and everything got done on time. And when people asked me for help, I would always say yes. I would also volunteer for things in the hopes that, you know, somehow the more work that I did, the better the outcome would be. And I made it through the first promotion and then immediately shifted my focus to the next one. And the second one was the one that I was really excited about because it meant that I would be an executive with the firm. And that year I had worked for several different projects and all the people I worked for told me they supported me. And then I still didn't get it. So I didn't get that promotion. And it made me question what I was doing with my life because I had basically dedicated my life to my work. And that rejection made me ask, is this really worth it? Because before that, the question had never even crossed my mind. And after I found out that I didn't get the promotion, I was talking to Rodney, who was the lead partner for our practice at the time, when I heard the words, I may have to consider leaving, come out of my mouth. And I was really surprised to hear that, because until that moment when they came out of my mouth, I hadn't even thought that. It's like I had blinders on that made me ignore anything that I didn't like. And I was loyal to the point where I never even considered the possibility of leaving, until I heard myself say that. And so I think if I had gotten that promotion, I probably would have never considered leaving. But because this whole thing happened, I realized that I needed to reevaluate my life and whether or not what I was doing was worth it. 
And so that form of rejection was a gift in a way because it opened my eyes to new possibilities and it eventually led to me taking a leave of absence and then starting down a whole new path. And it also helped me prioritize my health and other aspects of my life instead of just my career. So going back to the article, so Charles noticed something that a lot of people who had both financial and emotional success had in common. And that was that they were the people who did not get the jobs that they wanted coming out of school. So they, they were the ones who experienced rejection, even with a Harvard MBA. And this happened early on in their careers. So they didn't get the jobs that they wanted. Things did not necessarily go smoothly. And there's a lot more in the article than what I've talked about here. So I would recommend you check it out. But one of the biggest things that stood out to me was that the people from Harvard who were happiest and who found the most meaningful careers were the ones who got rejected early on. So rejection is just data. It's just the universe saying, this is not your path. It doesn't define you unless you allow it to. Rejection changes your perspective on risk. You realize that some of the things that seem risky really aren't because you've already failed. You aren't going to go down that path that you thought you would. It helps you see possibilities that you may not have considered before. And because of that, you can be more intentional about your path because you aren't just going down the one that you had in mind. You're forced to think about it and evaluate all your options and think about what you really want instead of what's been laid out for you. I'm pretty sure that if I had gotten that promotion, I would probably still be at the same firm and not even questioning it. So rejection has an upside, and that is that it it can help you change your perspective on risk. It can help you see things and do things that you hadn't considered before. So if you enjoyed this episode, you'd probably also enjoy the episodes that I did on failure. I'll include links to those in the show notes as well. So find them at purelightpodcast.com under episode 66. And if you enjoyed this, subscribe and leave a review wherever you're listening to help other people find Pure Light. Thank you so much for listening. Until next time, may you be guided by your light.